Welcome again to the LL Basketball Roundtable, brought to you by Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology from the fabulous Broadcast Center here at 101 North Queen Street, Lancaster. Mike Gross, again, hosting, and seated to my left, the boys basketball writer for LNP, LancasterOnline.com, John Walk. To my right, Jeff Reinhardt, girls basketball writer for those same publications. And we're not gonna do uh, the remote thing uh, this week because you may have noticed there were some weather issues yesterday. Uh, we're taping this on Tuesday. Um, so we're going to get into it. A lot of stuff to talk about, though. That's not going to be a problem. And uh, Mr. Reinhardt. Yes, sir. One thing that's happened because we do this on Tuesdays is yes. a lot of times Tuesdays is a big basketball night. It is. In the high school hoops. Yes. So a big game tonight on the girls' side. Yes. Uh, a couple of first place teams getting together here. Lebanon has been fascinating. Uh, Kyla Correa. <laughs> 41 in a game last week, 36 the next night. She dropped 36 the next night against yeah. McCaskey. 77 points in a two game stretch. Wow. That's so not bad. That's awesome. That's so, respectable. Yeah, she's been playing great. So Lebanon's been a very pleasant surprise here. 10 wins, first place in section two. Yeah. They had their crossover game at Hemfield on Tuesday night. Hemfield finally got their first loss on Saturday. They lost to Wilson out of Burks. Wilson's pretty good. Yeah. They'll be a contender to win the Burks League along with like Burks Catholic next month uh so lebanon hemfield tuesday night anxious to see i'm going to be at that anxious to see what hemfield does defensively with correa because nobody has slowed her down this Cedar, is this yeah. is a, a very good program that is very good defensively the defending league yes. champion yes and pete maravich is coming to town to yeah, play against yeah. so what are they going to do yeah hemfield's very long yeah basketball slang Hemfield's <laughs> very long. Um, yeah, Miss Correa is not as long as Pete. No, uh, no, yeah. she's that maybe the wrong comparison. She's the jitterbug point guard between the legs around the back, setting up the offense. I think Hemfield goes some kind of man and just just tries to pester her. They mostly play straight man, pretty right? much, and they'll they'll do like one three ones uh, zone trap stuff half court into man. So I think that doesn't seem like it would work against her, but maybe, yeah. maybe it would. Maybe. I think what we're going to see with this kid is junk defenses Probably. going forward. Got Wait, to. Try to find ways to diamond in one, box in one, yeah. try to find ways to deny her the ball. Yeah. But Hempfield may not be, that may not be what they're about. No, Hempfield will do what Hempfield does. They'll use their length. Autumn Cook, their point guard up top, I think she'll she'll defend her in the backcourt as best as she can, make her work to get it over the timeline and go from there. But okay, Hemf what are the section implications? For section implications. Well, Hemfield is a game up on Penn Manor, and Penn Manor on Friday plays Lebanon. So a big week for Lebanon here. Yeah, they get they get the leaders. Crossovers. Yeah, they get yeah. the leaders in section one. So we'll kind of see what Lebanon's got. They'll be fine in their section, but these crossovers are really yeah, big. Yeah. Penn Manor's just a game out. They've been really good. They're six and one. Um, Did you see them coming? Or Penn Manor. A little bit of a I, 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 both kind of, kind of a little bit of both. I knew the talent was there. Yeah. Uh, they had some good seniors, some kids that have been there for a while. Morgan oh, okay. Miller's going right. to go over eight hundred points here. Uh, she had a concussion. She's just now kind of kept coming back into shape. But um, Penn Manor's been fantastic. They've. Penn Manor and Hemfield have kind of broken away from the pack there. Township beat yeah. Cedar Crest last night. Cedar Crest beat Lebanon last Friday, which was interesting. They broke Lebanon's seven game winning streak. So section one's been mighty interesting, but that's a huge game. Lebanon at Hemfield Tuesday night. All right, and on the boys' side, uh, speaking of Cedar Crest, I don't want to speak too much of them because it's my alma mater, so mm -hmm. I'm going to let you take over, John. The resurgence of this very young Cedar Crest team in section one has become a thing. And the Falcons are only, what, two, three years removed from winning the LL That's final, right. um, with right. probably one of the tallest teams in the league, yeah. and have kind of been building back from that after losing a ton of senior leadership in Jason Eberhardt and uh, Aliri Iofale, who's now at Rhode Island. Yes. Um, and Eberhardt's playing college ball. But anyways, um, so they moved on from that. They had a couple down years. Maybe it was one or two. I can't remember. Every timeline's thrown disarray. Um, yeah, I know. It's hard to remember pandemic. that. But anyway, yeah, they came into this year thinking, okay, this is a young squad. We'll maybe win some. We'll lose some. We'll take our lumps here and there. Hemfield starts off the year 8-0 think it's, oh, it's their second section to win and then they, way, yeah. we talked last week okay the black knights lost two in a row section one's now wide open we enter this week with cedar crest 
atop the Section 1 standings uh, with a couple big games coming up, one of them being this Friday when Warwick travels to Cedar Crest in the Section 1-2 crossover. Um, yeah. We've seen Warwick a bunch. You Have you seen Crest? I haven't seen Crest yet. So I, I have I'm, seen Crest. They are very young. Hmm. Very young. I, I would say their best three players are sophomores. And, they're, and they play four or five sophomores. And their JVs are almost all freshmen. Wow. I mean, they really, I think even they thought we're a year or two away, and this is a little hmm. bit of a surprise, although let's not go nuts. It's something uh, about the way the schedule has worked out a little bit because they have like five losses. Sure. Uh, and, and one and of Hemfield them. And beat them by 15 the first time. And one of those losses was to Lebanon by five points early in the year, which is worth pointing out because wow. this previous Saturday, Cedar Crest beats Lebanon. Right. Um, yeah. So now they're even in that rivalry yeah. series well, and could play again in the league playoffs. Is there, is there, um, a, and, is there a horn on the roster? Is there a horn on the roster? <laughs> no, that's on the roster? Gone. No. Those days are gone. No more yeah. horns. Yeah. Um, okay. And that's worth noting, Lebanon is the LL Section 2 leader after mm -hmm. beating Warwick last week. You saw that game. Um, yeah. What impressed you about the Cedars? Um, the Cedars won that game by 15. Mm. If you remember last year, Warwick was undefeated going into their first meeting in the section at yeah, Lebanon. Right. Yeah, I remember that. And Lebanon beat them by 15, and it was exactly the same score. Wow. Both years, 58 to 43. Hmm. Uh, and that was kind of the, the uh, welcome to the stage thing for Lebanon right. at that time. Lebanon's a little bit more of a known quantity now. They are coming off a loss in which they had tr a little trouble scoring against Cedar Crest. And last thing I want to mention in sections one and two, as you guys are watching this, go to the basketball page, Lancaster Online. Uh, Mike will have covered the Hemfield at Lebanon matchup from Tuesday, which is a rematch of last year's LL final. Ooh, boy. Um, so that'll surely be interesting. Now, section three, Lampeter Strasburg, 12-0. Mm. Wow. Um, one of the many interesting things there, Perhaps one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league. Mike was asking me before we went live on the air. Last Entering last week, the Pioneers had the LL, uh, at least this single season, single game high in 14 three-pointers. They go out, I think, Monday or Tuesday and top that with 15 three-pointers. And then later in the week, they play Donegal and make 17 three-pointers. Holy moly. They're averaging 8.8 .8 made three-pointers a game, wow. which is just ridiculous. Wow. Um, and mm. they probably four of their five starters can all just yeah, shoot the rock the lights thing. out. And we all think, okay, Ty Burton, yeah, he's been putting up big numbers as of late, but mm. Ben Wirtz come on strong. Luca Veranic is kind of the, the do it all Very guy much. for them. And yeah. um, they can kind of just throw the ball. Isaiah Pareto can <laughs> take your pick. I remember when we were in, when in the football version of this show during football scene, we were saying, I never remember, we saw NFL quarterbacks play in this league. I never remember anybody completing 80% of their passes yeah. for yeah. 10 yards. Remember we had yeah. that guy? This is kind of the same thing with LS a little bit. There's five times this year where they had 10 threes or more. Right. Wow. And there's been like a third of the league or, or there's been several teams, maybe a third of the league's teams where they've had double digit three pointers. LS is kind of leading the way in terms of total threes there. Mm. So I am curious, um, you know, what, what happens on a cold night for them? Yeah. Is that possible for them? Because they, they have six. so many shooters. Yeah. They just pass it around until somebody figures out, okay, who has wow. the hot hand tonight? Well, How they do have for sure four. They have four guys that have had maybe five threes right. in a game. I mean, right. How um, great for yeah. both of you guys. How great without getting too far ahead of ourselves, but hey, we're talking hoops. The LL playoff bracket is going to go back to full bracket this year. Right. How great is the boys' playoff bracket going to be? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. You guys haven't even mentioned Columbia yet. They're undefeated. Elko leads Section Four, and they oh. have yet in their program history, I believe, they have yet to win a league playoff game. So that's on the line. Columbia. Yeah. Anytime they get rolling, it's always a lot of fun um, for, for the league playoffs. Yeah. You know, the, the little engine that could going in to these games against Class 6A schools. Yeah. I'm curious to see how that matches up. And speaking of kind of contrast, Columbia also 12-0, but kind of doing it in different ways. A lot of teams are trying yeah. to zone Columbia just to slow them down. And oftentimes huh. when teams throw a zone at you, what do you do? You shoot the three. Shoot well, the three. Columbia patient. We're not shooting the three. We're going to pass, 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 and huh. then cut. If they're not doing that, they're running up and down the floor. Probably mm. the most entertaining team I've seen all season in the tide. The thing with Columbia is they do everything fast. I covered their game with Lancaster Mennonite last week, and they did throw a lot of zone at them. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. did this fast. I mean, yeah. they do. So. They, they are going 100, and it was very interesting to hear Kerry Glover, their coach, after the game say, we practice with a 30-second clock. Right. All the wow. time. Whenever we practice live, we practice wow. the 30 second clock because we want to go and take advantage of our quickness. Huh. You have LS, which has been undefeated, completely dominant. 
with sort of a skill-oriented team. And then you have Columbia undefeated, completely dominant, with um, more quickness and athleticism, although their skill level is very high and they have the point oh. guard. They have the point guard in Glover. One, one little fact here. They're the number one seed in uh, AAA, Columbia is, in the districts. Mm -hmm. Your Catholic is the number two seed. They played, Columbia beat them by 30. Holy. So, yeah. oh, by the way, guys, go. Columbia girls are playing that bad. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah, 13 and 0. Are, yeah. That's a combined 25 and 0. Yeah, up on the that's hill. right. How psyched are their fans this winter? Oh. I've covered Columbia girls like three times already, and I'm covering them twice this week. They get a big crowd. Yeah. Like the yeah. town comes out to watch the girls' games. And that's they're how loud it used and to it. That's how it yes. used to be, and maybe it's becoming yes. that way again. I covered Columbia Penn Manor girls coming out of the holiday break, and the gym was packed. Like, Are a, they, like a Thursday night Penn Manor at Columbia game, and it was packed for a girls' it, what, game. What's, is Columbia the girls' style? Are they also up and down the floor pressing on? Uh, they do run. They, right. They're high octane. I saw them play Country Day, that big matchup. Saturday. Because I think a part Columbia of it, as you know, day. is kind of that that gym, that setting, yeah. kind of the smaller it court. Is. You feel like everybody's yeah. on top yes. of you. So when a team's running the floor like Columbia boys do, I wonder if the opponents kind of, you know, not only flustered by that, yeah. but just kind of the surrounding circumstances. When they're good in basketball, it's always a good sort of a Hoosiers like story because it's yeah. just in it's sort of insulated sure. little town. It's like, we have so many schools now that are like Cumberland Valley. What's a Cumberland Valley? But Columbia. You know what that is. It's this yeah. town, great basketball history and tradition, and people in that town want to get behind Absolutely. those teams. Big yeah. week for Tide girls. Uh, they get a rematch with Country Day on Thursday, and on Saturday, they play Eastern York non-league, and Eastern's really good. They're, yeah. they're undefeated. Yeah. Uh, 4A, so they're going to play DeLone. They're going to play Lancaster Catholic. They're going to play Bermudian. That's that Columbia circle, that one. That's going to be the Tide's toughest girls game, I think, against Eastern on Saturday. While we're on the topic of Columbia, yeah. let's just stay yeah. on it since you hit on the girls. I hit yeah. on the boys. And in regards to schedule, last week they beat a really gamey Susquehanna Township team that was missing two of their top three scores mm. in COVID protocol, by the way. Yeah. Um, they topped Donegal, scoring 101 points, which is now the what? single game. Uh, league high for this season anyway among NLL oh. teams and then they beat Lancaster Mennonite to stay top section five and oh by the way um, they played some kind of showcase game I forget where the venue was somewhere in Harrisburg I believe and I beat Berlin yeah. uh, Berlin Brothers Valley oh who's yeah. Berlin Brothers Valley last year they were the class 1a state runner-up yeah, I think they were. I'm getting that right remember so, when we were at the arena last yeah, yeah. year for that game and that yes. guy behind us was a Berlin Brothers Valley fan that was and just <laughs> killing the refs the whole oh, game that rings a bell. As you watch, <laughs> this guy. and as you watch this feel free to again check out the basketball page I will have covered Trinity at Columbia on Tuesday yeah. night Trinity uh, you know, only two or three years removed from making it wow. to a state final. Columbia has played a really good schedule. That's what we're getting. At. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, uh, so I, have their I, girls. That's what I'm kind of curious yeah, with Lampeter Strasburg. It's not against them. You know, they schedule these games how many years out. Um, you know, what, what happens against some tough competition, which they'll get hmm. this coming Friday. Go ahead with the girls. I'm uh, sorry. Two, just two other, two other quick notes. Um, Mannheim Central out front in Section 3. They've been really solid. Uh, Give us a milestone. 5-0. Five, five oh. Milestone. Uh, Maddie Nyer, the junior, got her thousandth uh, at Elko on Friday night. I got to see that. Little runner through the lane, <laughs> off the glass. <laughs> she told she me. she stays healthy, yeah. she's probably going for 1,600 maybe. Probably. Uh, the school uh, record is uh, Hillary Waltman, old friend. Oh, what a great uh, player She had 1,900 she plus. Yeah. Didn't quite get 2,000. Also a great college player. Correct. St. Bonaventure. Saint Bonaventure. Yeah. Um, Sent big game alert uh, Friday. Uh, Lancaster Catholics out front in section four, six and zero for the Crusaders, and they have a three game lead now on Elko. So they're they're close to clinching the section already, believe it or not, with a three game lead. They were probably close to clinching the section a month ago. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. So two huge games for Lancaster Catholic this week. They get Mannheim Central on Friday at Catholic. I'll be at that. That's a big game. Barons beat Catholic last year in Mannheim on a Saturday. And they snapped a really long winning streak yeah, for Catholic. That, yeah. yeah, really long winning streak. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Wednesday this week, Catholic plays Eastern York. So Eastern gets Catholic, a big 4A rival on Wednesday, and then Saturday so Eastern. So where will plays. you be? Right? Will uh, you be both of those? I will be at both. Uh, it's a Columbia Catholic kind of week on the girls' side. Uh, Tuesday, Lebanon, Hemfield. Uh, Wednesday, I'm going to see uh, Catholic Eastern. Thursday, I'm going to go to the rematch, Country Day. 
in Columbia. There's still two of the top teams in, in Double A. Uh, Friday Central Catholic, Saturday Eastern York Columbia. Uh, congrats, by the way, uh, Maddie Nyer. She's a treat. And I will be going to um, Lebanon tonight for their game with Hempfield. Those two teams have, they play each other really tough. I mean, they yeah. have a lot of history you know, with, uh, with each mm. other. And uh, so that should be good. And then on Friday, I'm going to um, uh, Warwick Crest. and Cedar Crest, yeah. which should be very good. Wow. And then Saturday, we have this uh, LL Midpen shootout. Nice. Six games Whoa. at uh, Doe Run Elementary School, which is where Manheim oh, Central yeah. is playing their, their games now. Probably the best matchup there, Hempfield and Central Dauphin. Ooh. That should be really good. Bishop McDevitt and Cedar Crest uh, should be good. Uh, Manheim Central, which has won 10, ten in, in a row, row yeah. really rolling. That's the last game of the night. Probably not going to make deadline with that one, folks, Sorry. to be honest with you. But they're playing Cedar Cliff, which is a very good team with a lot of size. Yeah. So hmm. that's that should be interesting. That's uh, so, well, John. Tell us where you're going to be. Yeah. We'll make sure to throw up a graphic, as Mike had described that, as far as uh, all the matchups for. Yeah, Saturday. that's a lot to process. Mm -hmm. um, as far as other games, yeah, we mentioned Trinity Columbia on Tuesday, and then Friday I'll be at Lane Peter Strasburg, um, the Section Three leader hosting the Section Four leader Elko um, coming up. And by the way, because I know he watches this, I want to give a shout out to Conestoga Valley coach Jim Shipper. Enters the week, 198 career wins. Oh wow! Conestoga Valley plays at home Tuesday against Township. Plays at home Thursday against Tenfield goes in the road Saturday at Oxford. So there's a chance uh, Shipper could go over 200 career wins. And speaking of shout-outs, I failed to mention this earlier. My apologies. Kerry Glover, Columbia senior guard. You had talked about him now at 1,050 career points entering this week. Um, one of 15 players in the 104-year program history to go over the 1K mark. And by the way, there were three players last week across the LL to score 30 or more. Etown senior Patrick Gilhole, LS sophomore Ty Burton, Warwick senior Tate Landis. They are three of eight LL boys basketball players. Wow. to go over the 30 point mark wow. so far this season. Wow, uh, <laughs> we're talking points real quick. Uh, Genesis Meadows Junior Country Day joined the 800 point club. And if she keeps up her average, she's at like 20.2. Yeah, good chance she gets to 1,000 this year. I wasn't yeah. sure. Three kids will hit 800 probably this week. Kelly Eckhart at Elko, Morgan Miller, as mentioned at Penn Manor, Jasmine Griffin at Ephrata. They should all hit 800 soon. All right, guys. <laughs> I think we covered it. I yeah, think, I, think yeah. we covered it. I have two other things I want to get to sure. before we Go. say goodbye. Go. One, uh, on the other side of the camera normally is our pal Tyler Uber. Tyler. He's a little under the weather. We miss Tyler. He'll be back and he's going to be doing the editing and all that kind and of stuff. And going out so, to practices uh, with us yeah, next he's, week. Uh, yeah. He's the man and uh, he'll be back. Get well, Tyler. And the other thing is, that in Sunday's paper, these two gentlemen both, Last in commemoration this past Sunday, yeah, uh, in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of, of the league, mm. did excellent histories and uh, sort of thanks, surveys mm. of the origins of the league and the history of the league. Great players, great teams, great mm. coaches. I strongly urge you to check those out on LancasterOnline.com. Really strong stuff by John and Jeff. Uh, if you didn't get the paper, you can still see it online. And if you like hoops, especially high school hoops, and you care about our league at all, I strongly urge you to check that stuff out. That said, we're done. <laughs> exhale, exhale. It's the LL Basketball Roundtable. Mike Gross, Jeff Reinhardt, John Walk. See you later.